Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. In my last video, I assembled the Prusa MK3S Plus 3D printer. In this video, I will take a closer look at its hardware, do some test prints to see how it prints right out of the box, and talk about what I like and what can be improved on this printer. The first thing I noticed when I opened the box was that it came with many brand named parts, including a Delta PSU, an Einzi Rambo motherboard, Mizumi bearings, Bontech gears, TMC2130 stepper drivers, and a genuine E3D hot end. You may ask that even if it came with many brand named parts, is it worth $750? Let's find out how much it would cost if we bought an Ender 3 and added the price of all these brand named parts and see what number we finally come up with. Creality has recently lowered the price of the Ender 3 from $179 to $155. So we will start with $155 to get a very basic 3D printer without any brand named parts. These are the costs of all brand name parts used in the Prusa MK3S Plus. One, a Delta power supply. The retail price is around $100. 2. Some Mizumi bearings. There are 10 bearings used in the X, Y, and Z axes. Each of them cost around $7.40, so let's add $75. 3. A Einzi Rambo motherboard. This six-layer motherboard is pretty high quality. The retail price is around $90 to $130, depending on where you buy it. So let's add a hundred dollars. Four, a E3D V6 hot end. Most budget printers use a clone. A genuine E3D costs around fifty dollars. Five, some Bontech gears. Inside the extruder, there are a pair of Bontech gears. These gears are sold for twenty-seven dollars on the official website. So let's add $27. 6. A bad leveling sensor. Prusa is using a Super Pinda probe sensor, which works faster than a BL Touch, and it's also very accurate. So let's add $26. A Dual Z Axis. If you buy a Creality Dual Z upgrade kit, it would cost around $50. So let's add $50. 8. This double-sided spring steel PEI print surface costs $35 on the Prusa website, which is a pretty reasonable price. If you buy a similar print surface without a brand, it still costs you $30 to $40. Let's add $35. 9. An optical filament sensor. A cheap filament sensor costs less than $10, so I will add $15 for this optical sensor. If we buy all these parts, it will cost us $478. If you add the price of a basic Ender 3, it will cost around $633. Since the retail price of the Prusa MK3S Plus is $750, you're paying $120 for the Prusa brand the Prusa slicer that's made for the printer, and other convenient features that I will talk about later. So on paper, this printer is worth $750. Next, I will take a look at how it prints out of the box. For all the test prints, I will use the default profile. I won't do any fine tuning for each 3D model. First, let's test the 3D Benchy. I printed three of them using three different types of filament, a roll of cheap white PLA, the Prusa's gray PLA, and the Prusa's galaxy black PLA. You can compare the quality of these three prints. The worst one is probably the cheap PLA. The stringing and the layers don't look too great. The gray PLA is slightly better. I think the best one is the black PLA, 
it hides the layers pretty well, and there's only a bit of stringing that can be cleaned up pretty easily. Next, I will do a tougher test, the Eiffel Tower. If you remember my previous videos, I printed this on the Ender 3 Pro, the Ender 5 Pro, the CR6SE, and a longer LK4 with an Ender 3 Direct Extruder. All of them didn't do too great. So let's see how it prints on the Prusa. These are the results. The stringing is better on the Prusa. The prints from other printers were a little weak and easy to break, so the models were basically unusable. I would say that the Prusa did a really good job compared to all other printers. For this model, using direct extruders definitely has an advantage which is why the LK4 also did pretty well. I've spent the past week printing all my stuff using only this Prusa. I printed some vacuum adapters. As you can see, they fit perfectly. I also printed some CNC fixtures, as I need a low-profile vise to clamp some aluminum plates. I also printed some parts for my core XY design, which is just a prototype. I will make some aluminum parts when I get my new CNC machine, and make some more videos to share this project with you. In fact, all these parts are fairly simple, and all of my printers can print these models pretty accurately. Let's go over what I think this printer did well. First. I will talk about some features that you can't find on other budget 3D printers. The Einzi motherboard came with TMC2130 stepper drivers, and this printer enabled sensorless homing by default. The print volume is slightly smaller than the Ender 3, but it can maximize the print volume by using sensorless homing. The print surface is actually bigger than the Ender 3. It also has a very solid print bed. As you can see, there are no springs under the bed, so no corner adjustments are needed. It also lets you print a simple pattern to adjust the Z offset, so the paper test is not needed. The linear rods on the X, Y, and Z axes are very smooth. With the high quality Mizumi bearings, it works great. By default, the print speed is set at 60 millimeters per second. After the first layer is printed, I normally boost it to 200% at 120 millimeters per second. I can print at this speed and still get a good result. I would say the linear rods and Mizumi bearings work better than the rubber pulley wheels. The heated bed heats up quickly. Since Prusa installed some strong magnets under the heated bed, you don't have to stick another magnetic sticker on it, resulting in a thinner print surface so the bed heats up faster. There are also two screws at the top, so you can fit the spring steel sheet more easily. The E3D V6 direct drive lets you print at 300 degrees Celsius. That means you can print most materials including carbon fiber, nylon, or any high temperature filament without any upgrades or modification. The bed leveling sensor works quickly and accurately. As you can see, it only takes around 15 seconds to probe 9 points on the bed. This Super Pinda sensor is really impressive. The IR filament sensor supports auto feed. Once you have preheated the printer, you can just insert the filament and it will feed in automatically. Besides these unique features, there are also a lot of designs that make this printer more user-friendly, like the dual filament holder, quieter fans for the hot end, and cooling for the parts. The sample G-code files also included the print time, so when you first test out the printer, you know exactly how long it takes to print the sample model. The firmware is based on Marlin, but the redesign menu is very convenient and easy to use. When it's printing, the remaining time of the print is accurate. 
It updates automatically in real time if you adjust the print speed. Let's talk about what could be improved on for this Prusa. First, the 8-bit processor. You can't really tell the difference between an 8-bit or 32-bit processor in terms of print quality, but an 8-bit processor is a bit too outdated. Another disadvantage of this slow processor is, when you load the files on the SD card, it's a little bit laggy, as the LCD screen menu is controlled by Marlin, and Marlin is running on this slow processor. Moreover, a 32-bit processor costs almost nothing. It's probably just $10 to $12 more than the 8-bit processor. This motherboard also didn't come with a bootloader, which means you cannot copy the firmware file to the SD card, turn the printer on, and let it upgrade automatically. You have to connect the USB cable to your computer, download the firmware, and use the slicer to upload it. It's not too big of a deal, as you won't upgrade firmware every day, but it's not as good as other motherboards with a simple bootloader. The last thing I would like to improve is that some of the 3D printed parts don't really fit and are easily damaged. But Prusa made a full list of all the 3D printed parts available to download. So you can always reprint any parts. But if this is your only printer and you damaged some parts when you assembled it, that may be a problem. In conclusion, I would recommend this printer if you want a high-quality, reliable 3D printer. It comes with many parts with brand names, and it definitely works better than some other budget 3D printers. But if you expect a much higher print quality, that's not what this is. It prints pretty much the same as my other upgraded 3D printers. If I print the same model with all my printers and this Prusa, I probably wouldn't be able to tell them apart. So why would you spend $750 instead of $200 to get the same print quality? It's just like spending $100 for a pair of good quality running shoes instead of a pair that is $20. You won't run any faster with shoes that are five times more expensive, but you may be more comfortable or the shoes could be more durable. I think that's why I like this Prusa. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.